Good evening, everyone. I just want to welcome you back to uh, the Virtual Village Church uh, Sabbath Bible Lesson Study. With me here is Elder Abrams. I am Pastor Donald Retimeyer, and we are so happy to be back after a little short break and as we still try to continue to reorganize and to rebuild, we just want you to know that we are here and we are going to be doing, you'll see some things a little differently than, than we did before. But by the grace of God, we'll do the main thing. We'll keep the main thing, the main thing, Ella Abrams, and that is to keep proclaiming the word of God. Amen. And today we are starting back this Sabbath school lesson with... Um, with lesson number six for this quarter, and lesson number six is entitled The Two Witnesses. The Two Witnesses. This is a little tricky lesson. It's because this is such a topic that has been uh, um, a point of, of, of so many various interpretations, <laughs> depending, on, depending on who you're listening to, as you, you, you'll hear different things about these two witnesses and who they really are. So we're going to try to weigh in on this and try to give um, what the word of God says these two witnesses are. And hopefully by the grace of God, it would clear up in your minds. Yes. A lot of the misconceptions or a lot of the doubts or a lot of the apprehensions or, or whatever you might be struggling with when it comes to interpreting the Bible um, and what it is saying about these two witnesses. So I just want to say welcome. Welcome back to the Virtual Village Church. Those who are listening, um, and wherever you are in cyberspace, you know, uh, we are thankful to have you here with us. And we pray that the word of God will indeed be to you as meat in due season. Let us bow as a prayer. Father and our God, we are tru truly thankful for another wonderful opportunity that we have to look at your word. And as we look at lesson number six, of our quarter, the new quarter. Um, it's half, almost halfway. We are halfway through the lesson already. And so we just pray, oh God, that you may guide and direct our thoughts. We pray for those of our teachers who couldn't be on with us tonight, Elder Thomas and Elder Chris. We just pray that you may bless and keep them and bless myself, oh God, and Elder Abrams and me, our part tonight. And we pray that you may bless all those who are listening, wherever they may be, O oh God. We pray that the word will indeed be meet in due season for all of us, for we ask these things in your most holy and precious name. Amen. 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 All, right. all right. So for our memory text this week, Elder uh, Abrams, the memory text says, the grass withers and the flowers fade but the word of God stands forever. And that's coming from Isaiah 40 and verse eight. eight. Isaiah 40 and verse eight. The word of God stands forever. And I think that that alone there um, probably give us the essence or the crux of what this lesson is all about. Because we, as we go through this lesson, we're gonna see that through the centuries, God's word has been desecrated. It has been, you know, um, doubted it has been discarded and it has been uh chained in monasteries burned in the public squares and torn to shreds its believers has been ridiculed mocked imprisoned and even martyred and it says through it all god's word has prevailed and that is 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 so true when we think about it and the marvelous thing, or to me, the, 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 the wonderful thing about the Bible is that it was written over a period of time, I mean, by some 42 or so different authors, and, and they wrote six books. And most of these guys never knew each other because they were living in different time periods. But still, there is a chain that link each and every one of those 66 books um, to each other. And that chain is, is, is there because even though these guys were writing separately, didn't know each other, but the Holy Spirit or God himself was guiding them. Amen. Amen. And it's God that helped to put this Bible together. 
who has kept it together over the years, in spite of everything that has been going on. But the Lord of the, the Word of God stands firm. Amen. Amen. To read the introduction, it says, "Yet God words illuminates or illuminated the darkness, oppression, and persecution did not stop the proclamation of the Word of God." As English Bible translator William Tyndale was tied was tried for his faith, he was asked who aided him in spreading God's word. And this is what he said. This was so neat, Elder. This was the best part of the introduction for me. He pondered, he pondered the question and answered, the Bishop of Durham. And people were amazed, the Bishop of Durham, because the Bishop of Durham was totally against Tyndale <laughs> what he was doing. And so the magistrates were shocked. And then Tyndale explained that on one occasion, the Bishop purchased <laughs> a supply of English trans translation and publicly burned them. And he says, what the Bishop did not know, what the Bishop did not know at that time was that he was greatly aiding the cause of truth. He had purchased the Bible at a much higher price than usual. And it says, with such a large purchase, Tyndale was able to print many more. <laughs> so he was many more Bibles that were born. And it says, truth crushed in the dust has risen again and again to shine in all its brilliance. And that, that is so marvelous and that is so wonderful about the truth of God and the word of God as we know it, because we know that, especially during the Middle Ages, they, they were doing everything possible to close out the Bible and to do away with the Bible and to do away with, with the word of God, especially. And we know that it's, it's um, still here. And not only is the Bible still here, Elder, but to date, the Bible is the best-selling book. Amen. All books for, for the last 2,000 or 3,000 years, you know, or, or at least, let's say for the last 2,000 years or so. The best-selling book ever. Amen. It all was in the last century. You know, there's not a book that has been that has sold more than the Bible, and it continues to be a best-seller. All right, so as I close on the introduction, let me just say this. It says, this week, we explore one of the most vicious attacks on scriptures and the Christian faith. It says, during the French Revolution, blood flowed in the streets of France. The, the guillotine was set up in Paris public square, and thousands were slaughtered. Atheism became the state religion. Nevertheless, the witness of God's word could not be silenced. Who are these two witnesses that stood the test of time? Amen. Let us jump into Sunday lesson. And, and um, Pastor, before you go, when mm -hmm. we look at the memory text, yes, the grass withers. Mm -hmm. The flower fades. Yes, sir. But the word of God stands forever. Mm -hmm. The word is the standard. Mm -hmm. God's word will always be there forever. Mm -hmm. Because if you look in John, it says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with, with God, mm -hmm. and the word was God. That's right. So if God is the word, and God existed from everlasting to everlasting. Therefore, God's word will stand forever. Amen. <laughs> there is nothing mm -hmm. that will prevent it from reaching the masses that it ought to reach. Because man never created anything. Only God creates. If man could have created something, then we would all be in trouble because the wisdom, the knowledge, and everything comes from God himself. Amen. Amen. So when we look at um, 
how this message, the word got out, even in the face of persecution. Many were slaughtered and killed in, in, in France using the guillotine and where atheism was established as a state religion. <laughs> what the state now mm. is now sanctioning religion and saying that atheism must be the religion of the state. Mm -hmm. Wow, it it bound to fail. Mm -hmm. And we see the two witnesses. You cannot bury them. No. You cannot outlast them. Mm -mm. And the two witnesses is the Old Testament and the New Testament. All right. That will stand the test of time. All right. Well, let's see if we can where we find that out in the Bible, right? Where, where, where the Bible says what you're saying there, that those, the two witnesses are the Old and New Testament. So let us jump into Sunday's lesson. And it is entitled The Two Witnesses. And in Revelation chapter 3, Revelation 11, verse 3, it says, And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy 1,203 score days, clothed in sackcloth. That's a lot there in one verse. Yes. What is, what is John saying there to us? The first thing that we can look at is to identify the two witnesses, and as you rightly said, the two witnesses are the old and two test, the old and new testament, right? Yeah. Because the Bible says that His word are the ones that testify of Him. They, the Bible, prophesy or, or give prophecy of what is to come in the future. Yeah. Right, and not only does it prophesy, but it also tells us about the plan of salvation. Amen. Greatest plan of all. And so, from the Bible or from the Old and New Testament, it says, "From you know, in the mouth of two or more witnesses, according to the Word of God, shall a thing be established." And Amen. so, we have these two witnesses, the Old and the New Testament, speaking and yeah. telling us about God and what God is doing, not only in prophecy but also giving us the plan of salvation and giving us the, the way that we um, could get out of the jam that we are in. You know, where this, this boat that we call sin mm -hmm. that is threatening to carry all of us down. Mm -hmm. But God has made a way of escape through the plan of salvation. And these two witnesses, starting both in the Old and the New Testament, spoke mm -hmm. a lot about you know, this plan of salvation. But it says here also, Revelation, then you only said the two witnesses were there, Revelation um, 11 and verse 3. It says, they prophesy for 1,200 and three score days, clothed in sackcloth. You want to talk a little bit about that? What is, what is John saying here? I will give power unto two witnesses, mm -hmm. and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and sixty days, mm -hmm. three scores, clothes in sackcloth. Mm -hmm. Because people will read and study the word. When you read and study the word, you see how the Old Testament point to Christ and how the New Testament also point to Christ himself being here with us. Mm -hmm. And we see, we see in essence that the two witnesses, which is uh, the Old and the New Testament, mm -hmm. speak of the revelation, especially the, 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 the revelation of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. right. and, and we see, and, and the two witnesses can prophesy and see rain from falling for as long as it predicts. So we see actually people like Zechariah, the prophet who saw the two olive trees on each side of a golden lampstand. And we also see um, Elisha as well. So we see, we see that God's word being proclaimed in the power of the Holy Spirit to lighten the world. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Ella, so much. And 
I just want to piggyback on the 1260 days that, that John mentioned there in Revelation 11.3. The 1260 days in prophecy is actually 1260 years. Yes. Right? In prophecy, there's a lot of, in Revelation in, in particular, there's a lot of symbolic languages. All right. And so the, 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 the Bible um, speaks about that. If, if it's talking about prophecy, then we must get an interpretation for the prophecy. So, so what it says there in the 1260 days, and that is 1260 prophetic days, yes, right. literally would be 1260 years. years. And then the question is, where in the Bible do we find that interpretation where you can interpret a day for a year? And mm -hmm. if you look in the book of Ezekiel, you can find that in the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel is in the Old Testament. And this is where you get in the Old Testament and the New Testament collaborating, right? So you go to the Old Testament in Ezekiel 4 and verse 6. And the word of God says, And when thou hast accomplished them, it says, Lie again on the right side, and thou shalt bear the iniquity of the house of Judah for days. And he says, I have appointed each day for a year. Ezekiel 4 and verse 6. It says God has appointed each day for a year. We yes. can find that interpretation in Numbers also. Numbers 14 and verse 34. Yes. If you go back to Numbers 14 and verse 34, right? Numbers is right in the very front of the Old Testament. You got Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, and then Numbers. The fourth book of the Old Testament. The fourth book of Moses, right? And in Numbers chapter 14... And verse 34, you see God saying there um, about a day for a year, Numbers 14 and verse 34, he says, yeah. After the number of the days in which ye search the land, it says, Even forty days, each day for a year, yeah. shall ye bear your iniquities, even forty years, and ye shall know my breach of promise. Of promise. So we see there it says each year, each day for a year. Mm -hmm. And so that's the second part there. So we see the, the, the first part of this Revelation 11.3 where God says the two witnesses and we identify them as the Old and New Testament and then the 1260 days is actually 1260 years. And that is important because we are going to see about that um, 1260 years in prophecy having to do with the dark period or the dark ages, right? Where we read earlier where they were, you know, persecuting the Christians and they were trying to stamp out the Bible. And so it says there in Revelation 11 and verse um, 3, the last part of, of verse 2 here, it says they were clothed in sackcloth. Yes. In other words, they were covered with persecution or covered with um, uh, mourning. So when you say cloth is because you're you're mourning. You're mourning. You're 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 you know in in sorrow, so to speak. And during the dark ages was that period when the world and I would say Satan was actually behind it, trying to put an end to God and His Word. And so with this we, we've got a lot to cover we're going to try to do as best as we, we do the best we can with it with this the 1260 days or 1260 years was a period which we call the middle ages or the dark ages that started in 538 bc and it read it went right on to 1798 mm -hmm. and and um that was the the period known as the dark ages or when you know things were so bad because in 538 what happened to start that period was that papacy was given supremacy the head of papacy which was the pope was given both political and religious power and he had the power over all religion and all you know not not only religious power but also political power and they tried to do whatever you know they wanted with the truth of God and not only do what they wanted but what made it so bad was that papacy tried during those days 
to establish themselves in a way that would literally block people from experiencing the plan of salvation, which was through Jesus Christ himself. When papacy began to rule and they got that supreme power, what they were saying, in other words, that if you want to be saved, you had to be confessing to the Pope or the one who was in the head of the papacy because they actually put themselves in the place of God, trying to say that, you know, only the Pope and working or going through the Pope or through the priest, you can get forgiveness and approach the throne of God. And that we know was not true because according to the word of God, the Bible said there's only one way, right? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and, and the life. And he said, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. And so they were given that supremacy and they ran with it. And if anybody was against, that is how the persecution took place, right? And why they tried to, to, to take the Bible away from people. And they read the Bible to people during those days. So you didn't know what was being said, but you had to listen to whatever the priest or, or, or those who were reading to you, the, you know, were saying, and, and, and as far as you were concerned, because you did not have the Bible in your own hand, you know, what they said was the gospel. <laughs> and so you could easily be fooled or tricked by that. And so that was known as a real um, bad time. And then they persecuted those who tried to get the Bible for themselves. And that is where Tyndale talk about, you know, um, the Bishop of Durham trying to buy all the Bibles so that people couldn't get them and burn them in the street. Right, but the more they, they bought, God found, found a way, you know, to to get to get more of it out to people, so that the word of God can keep going forward. But what we so, see really is that during that era, mm -hmm. people were persecuted, mm -hmm. and a persecution came from the church itself. Yes, and. People were prevented from uh, reading the Bible because the priest was designated as the authority mm -hmm. and uh, they saw the papacy as the emissary of God. And so therefore you come to the priest who will forgive you of your sins. And if you're in, if you in, um, and then you can pay penance. So these things were created by the church. And these were all methods used by the church to prevent people accessing Christ. In other words, there was, you saw the priest as the person yeah. who could take away your sins and not Jesus Christ. Because yeah. they didn't want you to, to, the Bible was not even um, read in English. It wasn't translated in English even at that time. It was more in Latin to keep people ignorant of the truth. But God's word will always stand forever. Mm -hmm. And it has a way of God always have a remnant that will always be there to spread the gospel mm -hmm. so that the truth can be disseminated to God's people. Amen. And it doesn't matter what, uh, you know, man or evil angels or whoever tried to do with God's word, we know, as we said in the beginning, in the opening first day, the memory text, the word of God stands forever, forever. and forever. I'm going to read a little bit from, from Sunday lessons. It says, yes. these two witnesses can prophesy and keep rain from falling, for they are as long as, the, for keep rain from falling for as long as they predict, right? And we know that Elijah did that, right? Yes. Two witnesses that, or, or what Elijah was able to do that by, to prophesy about rain not falling in the day of Ahab and Jezebel, he used, or he was quoting the word of the Lord. God told him what to go and say, so that was the word of the Lord. And it says they can turn water into blood and smite the earth, and we know that Moses did that. And, yes. and again, you see, Elijah and Moses were prominent, right? And yes. 
in some of the things that they did with the word of God. But these are men that obeyed the word of God and followed the word of God and lived by the word of God. So whatever they did was by the word of God. And so um, Elijah said no rain would fall on, the, on Israel. And in answer to his prayer, there was no rain, right, for three and a half years. And that is significant. We got to keep that in mind, three and a half years. It says, then he prayed to God and rain returned after the, after the false prophets of Baal failed to end the drought. Moses, through the word of God, brought plagues of all kinds on the Egyptians, including turning the water to blood, because Pharaoh refused to let God's people go free, according to the word of God, right? So those who seek to harm the scriptures will be consumed by the fire that comes from their mouth, or from the word of God, right? Because you speak this word, behold, I will make my words in your mouth fire. Thus people uh, would, and it's, sorry, I make my, because you speak this word, behold, I will make my word in your mouth fire. And this people would, and it shall devour them. God's word pronounces judgment upon all those who reject it. His word is like fire in the mouth. Amen. I gotta say wow to that. Yes. All right. So let me continue. It says, um, God's word cannot, cannot fail. In John uh, 5, 39, Jesus declares that the Old Testament scripture testifies or bear witness of him. He also says that God, the gospel will be proclaimed as a witness to the old world. And the New Testament, together with the Old Testament, is the basis of that witness. A word from the same root, right, as the words of for witnesses used, is the two witnesses appear in Revelation 11.3. They say, who are these two witnesses? In view of these Bible biblical points and the characteristics given in Revelation 11, we can conclude, right, not dogmatically, however, that the two witnesses are the scriptures of the Old and New Testament, communicating God's light and truth to the world. Amen. And is there, I mean, there's so much more but we have to move on. So we'll go on to Monday lesson now. And Monday talks about the time period of the 1260 60 days. So we look at the two witnesses. Now we're going to look at that time period of 1260 um, years, which we said would be 1260. 1260 days, it says in Revelation, but we know that the interpretation of it is 1260 years. Yes. Elder, you want to mention something about that before I continue? No, that's good. You're, you're good. All right. So the 1260 years, if we look in, in other parts of the book of Revelation, we're going to see it as, as um, 1260 um, uh, years. We're going to see it as time and time and the dividing of times. We're mm -hmm. going to see it also as 40 and two months, right? So if you look in Revelation 11 and verse 3, mm -hmm. it says that they shall tread down the city, the end of verse 3, for 40 and 2 months. Right? At the end of verse 2, sorry. Verse 2, it says 40 and 2 months. And then in verse 3, it says they shall, um, it says there, and they shall prophesy 1,203 days. Three score days. Mm -hmm. Three score days. Three score days. Thank you. Clothed in sackcloth. So that 42 months and that 1,203 uh, score days is actually the same thing. Yes. Because here again, we got to look at prophecy, right? And if you look at prophecy, um, counting each day for a year, 42 months, if you in, in, in biblical times, how they 
um, count each month. It's not like today how we have some months, you have 31 days, some 30, and some, you know, February you get us 29 or 28, and all the rest of it. In the biblical time, when John was writing here, each month was 30 days. Mm -hmm. You just have 30 days for every month. Mm -hmm. So if you multiply 30 by 42, you would get 1260. 1,203 yeah. score days. Same thing, 1260. And that 1260 time, as I mentioned before, time period, right, is a part of the prophecy that when the, when 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 is or the time period when the papacy was you know ruling supreme and they could do whatever they want and that lasted from 538 um bc 538 bc right on until 1798 ad right and and that time period for 1260 years was a period when uh, the papacy ruled, and it came to an end in 1798, after the French general was able to, after the French general Bartier, Bartier. march, yeah, march into France, or march into into Rome and took the the um the pope, the papacy, or the pope captive, and mm -hmm. it put an end to that to that rule where the papacy ruled supreme for all these years. Mm -hmm. Right, and that was during the French Revolution. And I mm -hmm. said 538 BC. That was 538 AD, actually. 538 AD from 538 AD until yes. 1798. All right. So that's for 1260 days. And I'm going to just read a part of the lesson, and and try to bring up a little bit more clarity on it. It says the two witnesses mm -hmm. will prophesy 1,200 and 60 days flowed in sackcloth because this is the same time period as the 42 months right as we said before it says gentiles um those who oppose the truth, truth. Mm -hmm. will tread. those who oppose god's truth will tread the holy city underfoot the enemies of god tread underfoot god's truth for 1260 days which is 42 times 20 and it says each day symbolizing a year, make it um, 1260 years. And it says God, two witnesses, the Old and the New Testament prophesied um, during, or during same time. prophesy again, prophesy against them yeah, during, during the same time. So the question is how did God prophesy or God's two witnesses prophesy during this period of the 1260 years if you remember last week lesson i think it gave us a little light on that you want to touch on that we have the waldenses yes we have people like uh, john hoff yes. we have jerome we have um, luther and we have uh, john and charles wesley these were um uh were actually they actually were reformers who were disseminating and getting the word of God out to people. And, and when, when we look at people, even, even um, the um, John, um, what's his name? The, uh, the first one, um, uh, God, I forgot his name. But um, these reformers really paid a price for us that the word could have been preserved and were still disseminated to God's people. So it just goes to show that the gates of hell would not even prevail against God's word, much less God's church, mm -hmm. because the word is of God. God yeah. is the word. Yeah. He said, let there be light and there was light. That's yeah. the word, he spoke the word. Amen. Yes. So Thank these reformers you. really paid a price for us mm -hmm. because the light, the Holy Spirit moved these men that even they faced death and it was 
And one of them even said it was delicious in last week. Because to die in Christ, what a way to die in Christ, knowing that there's a crown waiting there for you when that day shall come. Mm -hmm. So these men were filled with the Holy Spirit and because they couldn't do it on their own. Naturally, we can see how the Holy Spirit moved these men that they were able to spread God's word. Amen. And especially in lesson four, thank you very much. We see how the word was really, um, you know, being proclaimed or prophesied in sackcloth, all these men, because they couldn't do it openly. And we, you mentioned the world and seas. Yes. They had to work undercover, and sometimes they had to send their children. Yes. Oh. God, because the adults could have been persecuted, but the wow. children were, were able to get it out. So they were really, so the word was still being proclaimed even during those dark ages, even though it was done undercover. And then we read in the, in, in the introduction of this lesson that, um, you know, John Tyndale himself, you know, talking about the Bishop of Durham, who tried to wipe out the Bible, who bought all the Bibles that he could get, right. paying whatever price he can pay for them. Mm -hmm. And then John Tyndall was able to use that same money and buy and print more Bibles. Amen. Amen. <laughs> more Bibles and print Amen. more than what was burned. So even though the word was, was being persecuted or the two witnesses were being persecuted, they still did not die. They still kept down. They, they were under subplot, yes, you know, and, and they were under uh, persecution, but they kept going. The word of God kept going out. And, and I, I'm thankful. That those um, reformers and those you know people like the Wallenses and all of them that worked during those dark age, ages to keep the word of God going. I'm thankful for them because we are here today. Amen. And we Amen. can proclaim not in sackcloth, but we can proclaim from the mountain top. Amen. The word of God is still alive. And Amen. Pastor, when we look at people like John Wycliffe, yes, and he died in prison. And, and he was persecuted. I mean, he wrote, copied the Bible with his with his hand, mm -hmm. with a pen, handwritten, and and translated the Bible in English. Now, even though he died, they dug up his remains and even burned, yeah. burned it, yeah. and scattered the ashes uh -huh. in the river. Little did they know by even scattering, look at the analogy, they're spreading the word of God because when you look at the river, the river current is always moving. moving it means right. that God's word is always going forth. Yes. And so therefore, when they think that they burn this man remains, then throw is in the ashes, they're spreading the word of God because people are emboldened. Yes. Look at Stephen also. When he, when he proclaimed the word of God. Yep. And, and he was bold. He stood up. Testify about Jesus. Amen. Mm. All right. Praise God. So let me just read a little bit more from Monday lesson. It says, you know what, Ella, why don't you read? Read that, read that um, paragraph on Monday lessons where it says, when the authority of scripture is neglected. Yes. Mm. When the authority of scripture is neglected, other authorities arise instead. Mm -hmm. This often leads to persecution of those who uphold the word of God, mm -hmm. which happened during the time of papal domination mm -hmm. from AD 538 to AD 1798, when the medieval church descended into deep spiritual darkness. Mm -hmm. That's a spiritual abyss. Mm -hmm. The decrees of men substituted for the commandments of God. Mm. Human traditions overshadowed the simplicity of the gospel. Mm. The Roman church united with the secular power to extend its authority over all of Europe. Mm -hmm. During these 1260 years, the word of God, his two witnesses, were clothed in sackcloth. Mm -hmm. Their truths were hidden under a vast pile of tradition and ritual. 
these two witnesses still prophesied. The Bible still spoke. Even amidst this spiritual darkness, God's word was preserved. They were those who cherished it and lived by his precepts. But in comparison to masses in Europe, they were few. The Waldenses, John Hoff, Jerome, Martin Luther, Ulrich Zwingli, John and Calvin, John Calvin, and John and Charles Wesley, who formed the Methodist Church, and a host of other reformers were faithful to God's word as they understood it. Amen. Amen. And and you know what is remarkable about that, Elder? If these men could have proclaimed the work of God during a time like that. Wow. You know what is stopping us today? <laughs> What is stopping us today? Why are we, you know, not making use of the time that we have right now? Because you know what? It's going to come again. The darkness is going to come on the earth again. But I'm, I'm just so thankful that even before this happened, the Bible predicted that this persecution would come, right? This revelation, John wrote about this 1260 days or 1260 years of um, darkness or, or papal domination in the first century, just about in the first century or towards the end of the first century was when he wrote the revelation. And we were able to see the fulfillment of this mm -hmm. to the letter from 598 um, AD to 1798, from 538 to 1798. To 1798 80, 1260 years and just as the bible said it came to an end in in 1798 when the pope um, power was taken away from him during the french revolution but during that same revolution something happened to the two witnesses as well and that is what tuesday lesson is all about so let us turn our bibles to mm -hmm. the book of revelation once again and let us look at revelation 7 through 9 revelation 7 through 9 you want to read that for us? Re Revelation 11, right? Revelation 11, yeah. Revelation 11, 11. 7 to 9. Hmm. And when they shall have finished their testimony, hmm. the beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. Mm -hmm. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, mm -hmm. which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Mm -hmm. And they of the people and kindred and towns and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. Mm. All right, and it says here we know that the Roman Empire was was in rule, or they were ruling the world ever since the time of Jesus Christ. Rome was in charge, and that is why, um, you know, the Jewish leaders had to consult it with Pilate before they could crucify Christ, right? Yes. But it says here it says by AD 538 the pagan the pagan Roman Empire had collapsed, and it says Justinian the Roman Emperor surrounded. Uh, surrendered civil, political, and religious authority to, to Pope Vig Vigilus. The long period of the medieval, medieval, medieval church domination began. It continued until 1798. This is the French General Bertier mm -hmm. on orders from Napoleon marched unopposed into Rome on February 10th, 1798. And it says Pope Pius VI was taken captive and brought back to France where he died. Yes. This date marked the prophetically predicted end of the Rome of Roman churches, of Roman churches secular authority. The 1260 days or years as predicted in Daniel and in Revelation, this was predicted in Daniel as well, right? Yes. And the Revelation um, came to an end at that time. And it says, 
What a powerful manifestation of the truth of biblical prophecy. Daniel, writing from writing for more than 12, more than 500 years before Christ, so accurately predicted events more than 2,300 years later. And it says, we can indeed trust the prophecies given in the Bible. And there again, like I said before, all the word of God, two witnesses, right? In the word, in the mouth of two witnesses, the Bible said things shall be established. Yes. So Daniel writing 500 years, you know, more than 500 years before Christ wrote the same thing that, that um, John, or he was able to predict the same thing that John wrote about, um, you know, in, in about 60 or 70 years later after Christ. Mm -hmm. So we see the cor correlation between the two of yeah. them and the, the, the correlation between the two witnesses there establishing the same thing, talking about what would happen, talking about the two witnesses being cast into, um, you know, um, persecution and after prophesying sackcloth because of the people dominance and and the, the wonderful thing about it is that you know the prophecy came to an end just as the bible predicted amen but what happened before it came to an end you want to read from meanwhile there in in tuesday lesson well well well, well what we see in in actuality mm. is that this beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit making war over the um the two witnesses, we, 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 we see how Satan, who is the adversary, wanted to destroy the scriptures. Because from there on came the what? The French Revolution. Yeah. And here it is now, in the French Revolution, they declare the cult of reason, where they put up a woman as goddess. Could you imagine man's intellect that he thinks that he could <laughs> look 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 at how he wants to destroy God? Gotcha. In the French Revolution, the government officially established a cult of reason as a state-sponsored atheistic religion intended to replace Christianity. Yep. A festival of reason was held nationwide. On November 10, 1793, churches across France were turned into temples of reason. And a living woman was enthroned as a goddess of reason. Bibles were burned in the street. God was declared non existent. And death was pronounced to be an endless sleep. Satan worked through godless men to kill God's two witnesses. Their dead bodies would lie in the street in a great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, mm -hmm. where also uh, our Lord was crucified. Mm -hmm. And so we see Egypt was a culture of many gods that denied the true God. Sodom represents immorality. And in the French Revolution, two witnesses, the Old and the New Testament, lay dead as a result of atheism and immorality that ran rampant as normal restraints were loosed in revolution and bloodshed. But look at 11, Revelation 11 verse nine. Mm -hmm. And says the body of the two witnesses would lie unburied for three and a half days. Prophetic days represents three and a half years. Mm -hmm. Atheism was its height in the French revolution at least for about three and a half years. You see the scripture, the prophetic. Mm -hmm. This period extended from November 26, 1973, when a decree issued by France in, Fran in Paris abolished religion to June 17, 1797, when the French government removed its restrictive religious laws. Yeah. So we see the three and a half years, we see the prophetic, Prophecy? Yes. So uh, and there, 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 like like you said, Ella, we see that uh, prophecy or history bears out prophecy. 
Amen. Amen. If, if a thing that is prophesied comes to pass, the Bible said, so then we know that the prophets are true. Amen. It the past exactly as it was said so many hundreds of years before, right? The very thing that, that they said happened, they try to put aside um, religion, try to kill all, you know, making the Bible of none effect, so to speak. Yeah. And making God also of none effect, um, trying to put up a woman. And, and actually, that woman was actually a prostitute from what I heard. Yeah. Oh, my God. Woman of ill repute and said, Mercy. this is our God, you know, Mercy. instead of, you know, the God of the Bible. Yes. But, you know, we know that that didn't last for too long, for three and a half years. But after three and that, a half years, so prophetically. Decided, it says here in the word of God that they decided to, to, to bring back religion or to abolish that, that kind of, of, um, of a worship. Or, or, or that atheistic uh, reasoning, cult of reasoning, and try to bring back, you know, true. And they lift the restriction from the religion, from religion and, and practicing religion in France. In France. Amen. And so we want to thank God for his word. And we want to thank God for history, bearing out exactly what prophecy had predicted. So we know that God's word is you know his words are true so let's move to wednesday lesson oh what a joy what a joy pastor to listen <laughs> to come to wednesday lesson yes because this is the sweet uh -huh. how sweet god word is amen that no matter the circumstances no matter the trials no matter the tribulation god word will stand the test of time amen and we read it in, in Revelation 11, verse 11, it says, And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them. Yes. And they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. 12 says, And they heard a great voice from heaven saying upon, upon them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud. And their enemies beheld them. And the same hour was there a great earthquake, and tent of the city fell, and in the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand, and the remnant were afraid. And what gave glory to the God of heaven? God always have a remnant. Amen. 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 It, it, it's amazing how how you know people try to use secular things and try to put aside God and think that things that are of the world yes. are more precious than, than God himself. But it never lasts for long. Because, never. You know, three and a half years, the Bible says, they would, they would put it down, they would try to abolish it, they try to establish the cult of reason and banish, you know, religion altogether. But then, you know, after that three and a half years, the word rise again because they, they 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 abolish or remove the restrictive laws that they had on religion. So the word of God was once again back, and you know Psalms one ninety and yeah. verse eight nine. You want to read that for us? Oh, but before you read that, Elder, yeah, Psalms one nineteen eight one eight and nine. While you find it, let me read something from the lesson itself, from Wednesday lesson. Yes, it says here the infidel Voltaire once boastingly said, I am weary of hearing people repeat that 12 men established the, Christ the Christian religion. He says, I will prove that one man may suffice to overthrow it. Generations have passed since his death. <laughs> Millions have joined in the war upon the Bible, but it is so far from being destroyed, that where there were a hundred in Voltaire's time, they are now 10,000. Yes, a hundred thousand copies of the Bible, Yes, of the Book of God. In the words of the early reformer, um, reformer concerning the Christian church, the Bible, is an anvil 
that has worn out many hammers. What can we? What can we expect? Praise the Lord. Yes. What can we expect from an infidel uh, 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 pastor? Uh, Nothing. But Voltaire, Voltaire, as 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 prominent as he was in that that day, he was relying upon his intellect. Yeah. And God uses a simple thing to confound the wise. Yeah. And so God's word will always stand forever. Amen. And we look at one nineteen Psalm one nineteen verse eighty nine, which says, mm -hmm. "Forever, O Lord, Thy word is settled in heaven." Amen. Amen. So. God's word will never return unto him void. It is settled. The plan of salvation was even in place before God. What a perfect God. I mean, I, I, I just love this lesson this week. Because it affirms my faith that to die in Christ is worthy than anything that can ever, I can ever achieve in this life. Because when we look at the reformers, who sacrificed their lives, who didn't care, but just to get the word, the Waldenses and, 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 and the Hoffs and, 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 and people like um, Wycliffe and all of these people. I mean, how could you not see yourself doing God's work? Mm -hmm. Good question. And that is why, you know, it is such a privilege for us today to be able to proclaim God's word yes. know, and, and to be able to build upon what these men have started. Amen. How about you, but I'm proud to know Amen. this, you know, great uh, movement that is helping to proclaim the truth that we know will last forever. And we know that God's word will stand. Men will pass, you know. Yes. So, Kings and kingdoms will pass away, but you know that name of Jesus will stand forever and forever. Oh, but Our, when we look at our present condition, yeah, there is a struggle right now for the truth, where truth is turned on its head. Yeah, and everybody seems to have their own truth. How could that be? God is truth, and when we look at the standard and His character. We see that truth is something that we need to strive for. Because we look, when you look at even Psalm 1, 11, verse 7 and 8, which says, 7 says, the works of his hands are verity and judgment. All his commandments are sure. Mm -hmm. and it says, they stand fast forever and ever and are done in what? In truth and uprightness. Amen. Amen. So we cannot escape truth. Nope. And that is why, you know, when Christ judged, I mean, in the end, all that, and, and that's the thing, because everybody will have to one day give an account for what he or she has done with the truth. Yeah. You already yeah. have to give an account. <laughs> and nobody will have an excuse. Amen. So, we have to be careful what we do now, why, you know, while we have it and while we have the opportunity to do the things that are, you know, right and pleasing in the sight of God. Amen. You know, we have to be able to be vigilant with it and continue. All right. Can I read this quickly? It says, yes. God's word may be attacked or suppressed, but it will never be eradicated. Mm -hmm. Even many professed Christians undermine its authority in various ways questioning parts of the Bible, or so emphasizing the human elements that it all but loses its divine stamp and God's truth is undermined. Mm -hmm. We must never in any way allow ourselves to be seduced by these attacks on the word of God. Mm -hmm. It is still alive today, speaking mm -hmm. to human hearts, breathing new life into those who are willing to listen to the word and follow its teachings. Amen. Amen. Well, you know what? With that, if you want to read Colossians, Colossians 1 27, since you said that, and, and yes. uh, or we can read from, from verse 24. 
through 27. Colossians 1, 24 through 27. And while you find that, I'm just going to go to my... Colossians what? 1, uh -huh. 24 to 27. Good. So if you read that, let me read Matthew. Matthew, because this is this is the 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 the, the um commission that we have been given, you know. It says here, talking about trying to put an end to the gospel. It mm -hmm. says, and this gospel, Matthew 24, I'm reading Matthew 24, 14, by the way, Matthew 24, 14, Jesus preaching. Mm -hmm. The gospel is not gonna end. <laughs> you know, whether we proclaim it or not, it's gonna go out. Amen. <laughs> And this is what he said. He said, and this, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world. Yes. Not in just some, in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. So the gospel is going to be preached. It doesn't matter mm -hmm. if it has to do so on the sackcloth or yes. just ashes. It's going to go out. Amen. And only... Um, question that we have to ask is what is the gospel doing for you and for me you know yes. because paul says this is the mystery and, and and that is what i want you to read there, Lord. uh colossians 1 verse 24 to 27 yes you now rejoice in my sufferings for you mm -hmm. and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of christ in my flesh for his body's sake which is the church mm -hmm. Whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. Even the mystery which has been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. which is Christ in you, mm -hmm. the hope of glory. Amen. 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 So Paul is saying, here's the mystery that, has, that is revealed to us. Yes. That, you know, even some of the patriarchs of whole didn't quite understand it. They didn't mm -hmm. quite get it that was written there. You know, Daniel wrote some things that he didn't understand. And when he asked the Lord, you know, what is it? The Lord just tell him to close the book, you know. It is for those who are at the end of time. Yes. Father. But to know that we are living in the age, this is what I'm excited about. We're living in the age now where these mysteries are being made known to us. You know, and it says that the greatest of, of them all is the mystery of Christ being not only with us, but Christ being in us. In us. Which Amen. Is hope of glory. Amen. Amen. Oh, Amen. I tell you, those people Amen. Amen. About preaching, they, they did so. You know, that is why they were able to be to stand up when they were threatened with being burned to burn at the stake. And and even when they had to give their life, they give it willingly because of the hope of glory, Christ in you, being in them. But then he says in 28, whom we mm -hmm. preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Wow. Mercy. Amen. Uh, and we can go on much longer. But yes, so that our time has come to an end. And we really have to give God thanks for this. I, I, I know that we missed some of our teachers, um, um, Elder Chris and Elder Thomas. Yes, Elder Chris has a death in his Looking family. Forward. Yeah, to oh. Yes, he has a death in his family, Elder he, Chris. So he traveled to London. Okay. Yes, his grandmother right. passed away. Yeah, so we'll have to keep them in prayer. And, okay. uh, right. Yeah. And hopefully next time, since, um, you know, they, they'll be back with us at the next next week. Right? Yes. Depends. So hopefully next week we'll, we'll, we'll be back and we'll... Um, be at full strength, or at least be a little stronger than we are right now. But Elder, I am thankful for, for us being together tonight. I don't know. Amen. Amen. <laughs> God is good all the time. Where two or three is gathered in his name, you know, he's in the midst. He's always in the midst. Yes, yes. 
All right, so you can give the closing thought and then close out, yeah. Let us, before, what I love about this lesson is that it tells us that those who, we are standing on the shoulders of those who came before us and paid the price for us. The reformers, we must never forget the reformers and the sacrifices that they made for us that the word will go forth and that people will see Christ high and lifted up, drawing all men to himself. They were not looking to themselves. They were looking to Jesus. So we must continue to look to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Amen. So our faith, of, my faith is strengthened this week when we look at death and how we see death and, and, and the sacrifices that these reformers paid for us. So I thank God for them because we have more light than they did. And what are we doing with it? We have to answer that. In the oh, future. yes. Yes, indeed. And any comment that you want? Any closing? Okay. I just let, us, yeah. let us pray. Mm -hmm. Almighty and everlasting God, what a privilege it was to sat at your feet and to study your word to show ourselves approved today. Amen. We thank you for the word that will live forever and ever because you are the word, O oh God. And the word is truth and you are truth, O oh God. So we thank you that your Holy Spirit will continue to lead us and guide us into all truth. Prepare us afresh today as we worship you in the beauty of holiness. Take control of our lives as we commit our wills unto you. We thank you for those who heard the word and we hope that their heart will burn them and that they will continue to draw nearer and closer to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Bless each and every one of us, for we ask it all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.